welcome to the very first Aragon. I want to start off by thanking the, the production team and the organization. Um, it is not easy to do an event like this in the middle of a bear market and do it with this amazing level of care. So thanks to everyone from the early beginning up until now that we are all living this amazing experience. Thank you. <laughs> now I want to start talking about the Aragon journey because two years ago, decentralized organizations were just a dream. And today, <laughs> we have more than 300 decentralized organizations built on Aragon. <laughs> oh! In just three months. <laughs> and when we actually got started by creating Aragon, we thought about the day that Aragon may actually outperform nation states on just a single metric, just one metric, that's what matters, that's what gets revolution started. And I was looking at the number of incorporations in different countries. We have Germany, the country that is hosting us, thank you Germany, um, with around 20K incorporations per quarter. We have Switzerland, one of the main hubs and where the Aragon Association is, is hosted, with around 5K. Panama, 500. And then after that, we have Aragon with 300 in a quarter. That is real amazing to think that a very small number of the incorporations in the entire world are not done by Aragon, just three months after the launch. But it's not only that. We have already outperformed some nation states in this metric. So Paraguay has 150 organizations created in a quarter. So Aragon has basically 2x the amount of organizations or incorporations that a small country like Paraguay has. So we are already doing it, and the revolution has started. But there are another metrics that I think are even more important. So this one is really important as well because it gets the, it gets the feeling started. But there's other metrics that are even more paramount to us. And one of them that is very important for me is security. Smart contracts are driving forward what we can do with technology and minimizing trust between, between people. But they also introduce a lot of security attacks and possible attack surface. And so our engineering team has put a lot of effort into making sure that the smart contracts that power Aragon are secure enough and safe enough so any user, day-to-day -day user, can just use them without the need of worrying about their funds. And I am very happy to announce that after all the transfers um, and financial transfers are done after the last AGP vote, which will happen around a week from now, I think, there will be more than, and it is amazing, one million dollars under the management of decentralized organizations on Aragon. But let's back up a little bit. We are not just building Aragon for the world. We are building it for ourselves, too. We need to decentralize Aragon so the movement can last for decades. And so one of the efforts we started was actually creating a set of apps so we can actually have the Aragon community participate in the decisions. And so one of them is the survey app um, and, the, and the voting app in general, which is the best uncensorable and unstoppable voting app the world has ever seen. And you probably have used it last, uh, last week in the, in the AGP ballot. Um, and so I really have to thank everyone that participated because we reached more than 7% participation rate on the last AGP vote. So thanks to every single person here who voted. You are really important to the project. Now, as you all know, it's not only about decentralizing governance. There's just one little piece, but there is other side of the coin, which is decentralizing development. If there is just one entity that hires all the developers, what is the point of decentralizing governance? And so that's the reason that Flock exists. Aragon Flock is a program made so multiple teams can actually be working on the core Aragon development and not just one. And there are currently two teams that made it to the AAP ballot. Uh, to the last AEP ballot, so that's Aragon 1 and Odark. And I am very happy to announce that the community decided to fund both in the last ballot. So congrats, Odark, congrats, Aragon 1. Welcome. <laughs> now, of course, there are birds in the flock that actually were just a little egg in the nest. And so actually, Odark is one of these examples. They got started by being a nest project, that planning suit, and now they are a full-fledged flock team. And so that's the beauty of Nest. Nest actually gets 
those raw gems and makes them you know, convert into something such as, as, a, flock, as a flock team, which is amazing. Um, but we have to also think that Nest is not only for flock teams and growing flock teams. Nest is basically a project and, and a and you know, grants program that basically gives grants to other projects, not only Aragon-based, but also ecosystem-based and Ethereum-based. And I am very, very happy to announce today that, well, of course, you know that Nest is regarded for its transparency and execution. But also, there are a couple numbers that I want to say. So more than $1.5 million granted to more than 60 eaglets. That is 60 people, probably a lot of them are here, who have quit their jobs to focus full time on the decentralization movement. So thank you for joining us in this journey. <laughs> now I will talk about ANT. ANT is a token that unites us all here. And so I'm very proud of ANT because it is an actual governance token. Like you probably have used it in the last AEP ballot. You use it to vote, and it has actual governance utility. You can participate in the, in the path that the project will take in the future. But there is a deeper side to it. There is a deeper side of ANT being the native token of the world's first digital jurisdiction, the Aragon Network. And for me, that's just really great, because the team has been putting a lot of effort into making sure that the Aragon Network is not just a dream, but it's actually something that can be used by decentralized organizations very soon. Because when we got started creating decentralized organizations in the first place, we wanted to go always a step further. And so we thought, all right, if decentralized organizations exist, what are the tools that they will need to actually succeed? And so we thought about nation states and what they provide. They provide a court system. They provide a dispute resolution. They provide a system of law. And that is very important, because sometimes the smart contracts you know, you just cannot get all the subtleties of human beings. And if they do, sometimes they actually fail to capture the intent of their creators so they can have bugs and they can be attacked. And so that's where the Aragon Network kicks in. And the Aragon Network is the world's first digital jurisdiction, and it was just a dream a couple of years ago, or even a, a year ago. But the research team has been putting so much effort into actually making sure that we can implement this in a real way. And I am very, very, very happy to announce today that the Aragon Network is not just a dream. It's coming this year. <laughs> also, one of the things that we thought about when we started Aragon was that it is very hard to predict how people will use decentralized organizations. And so, you know, instead of trying to predict something that is unpredictable, we're just building tools so humankind can actually decide its own fate. And so that's why we built Aragon as an app platform. So any developer in the world can build apps and can actually stand what an organization means for us. And so for that purpose, we build this whole stack of decentralized technologies. From Aragon OS, the most advanced smart contract framework ever created, to Aragon PM, a decentralized package manager that takes care of upgrading the smart contracts, but also your app front end and also any data blob. You can create a decentralized app store uh, for Android, for example, using Aragon PM. Aragon API, which lets developers very easily fetch the state of their smart contracts. And then finally, Aragon UI and Lorikit, which leverage all the research and experience we have into building actual products that people use day to day in the decentralized space. And all of, they, all, all of them are really great by separate, but they are even better together. And that's what makes the Aragon SDK. And I am very happy to say that right now, the Aragon SDK is the easiest way to create a decentralized application, period. And we're seeing people using it today. So we have that planning suite, for example, which is actually not just an app, but a set of apps that are leveraging the Aragon SDK to create organizations which can be very large and can have people come in and out in a very fluid way. We're also seeing the payroll app, which lets employees have their payroll by the block. Espresso, a Dropbox alternative uh, built on Aragon that is fully decentralized or Pando, which changes the way in which we think about open source sustainability. Because in the end, as Steve Ballmer used to say, it's all about developers, developers, developers. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so really, I have to really thank you by, by heart and putting my hand on the Aragon logo uh, and to all the developers that are building on the Aragon platform right now. You are the ones that are actually moving decentralization forward. So thank you. Now it's announcement time. And so there is this common thought that you have to either choose decentralization or choose user experience. 
Um, but that is just not our thought. That is not Aragon. And we're going to announce something today that actually pushes forward both things. It pushes forward user experience, and it pushes forward decentralization. So as you all know today, Aragon is very decentralized. You can use it. You can use the Aragon client very easily. Um, but you can use it by opening a browser, which is great for adoption. But on the other hand, you have to interface with the old DNS system. You have to interface with the old web. You have to interface with centralized point of failures. And today we're announcing a new way to package Aragon. It's still the same Aragon that you use and love, but comes in a new package. And as you all know, the browser is great. But on the other hand, there we have some limits on the browser. So there are things and technologies that are just uh, very hard to get right on the browser. For example, um, IPFS, or running a light node, or running things such as the graph, which is written in Rust. So you just cannot have this go on Rust implementations on the browser yet. And we, of course, believe in web technologies. But on the other hand, there are trade-offs that we just cannot make right now. And one of the trade-offs that we cannot make is user experience and decentralization. We have to get both right. And so the engineering team has been working on a new way to package Aragon. And this new way to package Aragon actually builds a lot of the things that make Aragon 100% decentralized. So you don't interface with any DNS system or centralized system at all. But on the other hand, it also makes it blazing fast. And so I'm very happy to announce that Aragon is coming back to the desktop later today. <laughs> Aragon Desktop is really the best way to use Aragon. So Aragon Desktop is an app you install on your operating system. It's a native app um, built on Electron that packages Aragon and makes it blazing fast. So Aragon Desktop runs an IPFS node for you. So basically, it fetches all your apps in a blazing fast way. And it also intelligently caches the apps that you use the most. So you can have them use at that click away from you. And in the future, we're also thinking of adding light node support. So you don't need Infura or any you know, uh, centralized third party node. And we're also thinking about adding support for the graph, which will make any query to the blockchain blazing fast. So users will not even notice. And we really think this is the future of how Aragon will be used in a fully trustless way, no need to even like, type a domain name. And it's still, it is the easiest way to use. You just open it. It's blazing fast. It loads your data right from the blockchain. You can both in a blazing fast way. And it also supports Frame, which if you don't know about it, you will hear about it uh, during these couple of days. It's the best signing provider created right now for Ethereum. So that's Aragon Desktop, available later today. And there is another announcement today. Um, and I think Aragon Desktop is like a clean canvas for what we can do to increase user experience and decentralization. But there is a new way to package Aragon that we are introducing today that actually pushes forward adoption. And I will not be the one announcing it today. So if you want to get a hold of where we are going to announce, uh, go to Jorge's talk after the coffee break. But it is truly remarkable. Finally, to wrap up, um, as we all know, a few months ago, um, I actually stopped being the project lead for Aragon because it doesn't make sense for a decentralized project to have a lead. And we also split the Aragon Association from the different development teams. So we have Aragon One, we have Autark, and we have more teams that are going to apply, separated from the Aragon Association. But right now, I think it's the most important time for the association because its role is so key. The Aragon Association abstracts away a lot of the work that comes on play when you run a decentralized project. So these development teams just have to focus on creating great products and user experiences on the decentralized web. And we were looking for someone who could lead the foundation, the, the association, uh, previously foundation, now association in Switzerland. And we were looking for someone who really had the Aragon vision even before Aragon existed, and also someone who we could trust and could be a community member since the very early days. And we were very lucky to find that person. And that person is Stefano Bernardi, and today is here with us. So I want to welcome to the stage Stefano Bernardi, Executive Director for the Aragon Association. Thank you. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's really amazing to see such a community. It's, it's, uh, it's a testament to what you know, these guys have, um, have built. So um, there we go. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes today sharing why I think that decentralized organizations are the future. Hopefully, given you're all here, you also think that. Um, but um, I think that we've all gone through the pain of setting up 
a corporate entity sometimes, or uh, lacking the tools to collaborate with, um, with people all around the world when we're building stuff that we, uh, that we want to see in the world. And so the, the current system just doesn't work. Uh, you have to go to lawyers, you have to pay thousands of dollars, and all you get is really a set of really unintangible pieces of paper um, that cost you, you know, more than months of development and aren't really anything. You know, they're, they're just a sort of, of an idea, of a concept, but they, they don't enforce anything by themselves. Um, and if you explain that to some, you know, kid or the younger generations that the world is, is built like that and works like that, I think they will just, you know, take us all for like madmen. Um, it's, it's really impressive that the world really functions the way it does with that sort of legacy uh, framework and operating system underneath. Um, and so, you know, during the years while I was setting up companies and funds, um, I always found the process was completely insane. And so I started to think about alternatives. And um, I didn't have, you know, the technical tools to, to build it until, you know, I found uh, these two crazy Spanish teenagers that instead were actually doing something about it, um, which was a really a revelation. And so um, why is it that, you know, this is the solution? DAOs are, are clearly the solution to this problem. Um, you know, they're flexible, they're global, they're censorship resistant. Uh, anyone, anywhere can create a DAO in a few seconds for just a few dollars in gas costs for now. And, um, and right now, basically, with a DAO, you get more you know, and, and what these guys have built in, in one year, you get more than what your lawyers or your local jurisdiction can provide, right? So as Lewis was saying, DAOs today can um, enable, you know, basically having a shared bank account with rules and permissions, and you can set who can move money out and what votes are needed. Um, you can create a payroll just automatically that runs by itself. You can have voting on important topics. Uh, you can create governance tokens and assign ownership and, and remove it and change it. And it's, it's really magnificent when, um, when you really start, start using it and understanding that, well, obviously, this is how the world should have worked. Um, but sometimes you still get the questions of use cases. And, and people are like, yeah, I mean, that's really cool. But like, what are the killer apps? Or like, what are the use cases? And honestly, I've never really found a project or a product that has so many killer apps like uh, DAOs. So just to go through some of them, um, I think that these ones are um, situations where today DAOs are clearly the best tool and that in the coming years, in the real short term, it will be just the default choice for people all around the world. So um, projects for me are things that are more than an individual working on something, but less than a full-blown company. And, um, and I think that there's a lot of these, especially if you're working part-time or with you know, friends around the world. Um, these are, you know, they just don't fit in, in the current system. Online communities and local communities are another one. Um, we can have, for example, you know, um, movements like Me Too and uh, the Yellow Vests, how do you organize those ones? There's just no tool. Um, the future of work is also a very, very big part of this. Work is just changing very fast, right? We have people working um, part-time on multiple things or for you know, a few months and then changing. Um, it just does, is not covered by the current um, corporate system. And then we have temporary pop-up companies which um, are, are happening more and more. For example, you know, this event. Is, is a great example of that. You know, we did not create a new legal entity for this, but it kind of really didn't fit in the mandate of the Aragon Association. And, um, and there's, there's many, many similar things that are you know, organized by multiple parties that just don't fit in the system. And so, um, for example, you know, Aragon next year is most likely going to be uh, an Aragon DAO. Um, then we have the obvious and very bad problem of authoritarian jurisdictions where you just can't do stuff. So this is the, the most self-explanatory thing. And then, obviously, global distributed teams. Um, we are um, in the association. We will be uh, Aragon One and, and all the teams that are, I mean, most of the teams that are in this space are, are global, and they all know how difficult it is to kind of handle payroll in, in different countries. And with, with the DAO, you can just handle that all in a single place. Um, it, just, it just works. And so, Given all of this in these tools, we really think that this year the narrative is shifting towards understanding how important this is and why 2019 will be the year of the DAO. 
And there's a few trends around the world um, that, are, that are making this possible. And these are just a few of the, the first headlines I could really find online um, that just give us sort of an idea. So um, we've spoken about the future of work um, in both its kind of decentralized fashion as well as the, the flexibility of it. Um, but there's, there's other you know, things that are scary. You know, there's authoritarian um, regimes and, and populist movements that are rising all around the world and create a lot of uncertainty for people that want to operate in, in jurisdictions um, all around the world. And um, another big one is deplatforming. We're just starting to realize, uh, even if it was completely obvious, that we just don't own the, the data and we're just, you know, not very welcome guests on many platforms and we can be kicked out at any time uh, without any warning. Um, and I think that, that that is what is driving a lot of people towards this and, and what will really um, make this work. Um, problem with payments for, for different industries which you know, the credit card companies don't consider uh, okay. And, um, and then, as we said, you know, the, the Me Too movements or even going back, you know, the Occupy movements or Arab Springs, just imagine if they had DAOs to coordinate what they could have done. Um, and so to bring all this to life, um, the founding team of the Aragon Project decided to create the Aragon Association and to uh, explicitly it's explode itself uh, outside of it and give the ability to many different teams to work on this. And I think that this is really um, key to explaining what the Aragon ethos is. You know, they really want to build something that is decentralized. They really want to have different um, cultures and different styles working on this, uh, just to make sure that this is not, you know, their own thing. And especially, it can continue if they get bored or hit by a truck or anything happens. And so um, I am very proud to, uh, to lead the Aragon Association and, um, and make this happen. And to do that, we, we use tools that include everyone in the decision process. One of these tools is um, the AGP ballot that, that Luis touched on. And um, we now have given more than you know, $4.5 million to teams that want to build on Aragon. And that was a decision of the token holders. So I think that that's pretty um, amazing. But another thing that I wanted to touch on briefly is dog fooding. So um, this is kind of a bonus use case that I didn't touch early on. And I think it's one of the most important that can even work faster than the other ones. So anytime you work in a, even a legacy corporation that operates in the, in the offline world and, um, and local jurisdictions, you sometimes have teams that need to coordinate between themselves and even manage resources. So again, going back to the Aracon example, this could be you know, a team inside an organization, or it could also be an external one. But for example, at Aragon, we are going to have most of our functions and teams as DAOs. Um, Nest is probably the easiest to explain, right? Luis touched on what Nest is and how much money it gives away, and we're turning that into a DAO, where the association, well, now the, the network decided to fund this, and the association is just going to um, send the money to a DAO that will be made of team members from the Aragon Association, Aragon One, other flock teams, and general people in the community. And they will be autonomously making the decisions of who gets funded. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. I touched on Aragon, but for example, the association is also going to be a DAO. You know, even though we do have an offline legal structure, uh, our budget for year 2019 will be handled through a DAO. Um, and Luis spoke about Flock, but I wanted to touch on the fact that Flock is open. So please do apply. If you do have ideas for um, how Aragon could be better, and if you want to spend your time to uh, bring you know, the revolution to life, um, this, I think, is a pretty unique chance where you get um, funded for six months to a year um, with grants of 250K to a million. And, um, and it's open, and we're very happy to, to accept anyone. And uh, again, something that's very important to me, uh, we are hiring at the Aragon Association. We're looking for, um, for two people, uh, obviously all around the world, um, to bring this uh, vision to life. So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's really amazing to see everyone in the same room. And um, now, please welcome the MC for the morning, Ivan Van Ness. <laughs>